Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us once again. You know, young doctors that are getting into the field of medicine are expressing more and more interest in their options, including the role of chief medical informatics officer. That's according to Dr. Benjamin Cantor, our guest this evening, who's going to talk about his journey from practicing physician to CMIO. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Cantor, how are you? I'm doing great, Neil. Thank you very much for having me. Now, if you are an MD yourself. Uh, so I'll try not to bore your audience. I'm a pulmonary critical physician. Uh, I was in private practice in, the, in San Diego in, in California for about 25 years. And during that period of time, um, I worked also as department chair for uh, internal medicine and critical care. I was chief of staff of one of our hospitals. And I spent uh, just over seven years as a member of our executive management team for our hospital system as their CMIO, uh, reporting directly to the CEO of our, of our operations. Now, in your experience, are young doctors always looking to climb, I guess, the corporate ladder or getting to something bigger and more managerial? Or, I mean, you know, you're a physician and you're about healing people. What is it that transforms your, your thinking into management? Well, I, I will tell you from a CMIO perspective, uh, my value, whether it was to the hospital system when I was CMIO there or on the vendor side, and I've been on the vendor side for about five years now, mm-hmm. my value remains clinical. Um, and I think that physicians, you know, once you leave medical school and you get into practice, you realize that, yes, there's a lot about personal excellence that can improve care, but there's also a lot about developing systems excellence. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you go about engineering the right processes. So it really doesn't make a difference who the physician is. The, the systems are there to support the physicians, the nurses, and the patients. Um, and so I, I migrated uh, into the CMIO role in part because of technology, but in, in larger part, really in an effort to improve the systems of care. Um, to your original question, uh, certainly in the United States, burnout is a major issue. Mm-hmm. And physicians, I think, are always looking for uh, some way to practice, some way to impact patient care, uh, and continue to give themselves, uh, you know, re- reduce the stress on their life, give themselves maybe a better life overall. Um, and so I think physicians are continuously looking for other opportunities, whether it's administrative uh, or clinical. Are the, the varied options in the medical field presented to, to young graduates or, or residents early on, or is it something that you kind of stumble onto, hear about, find out on your own? Yeah, I think the opportunities, uh, I, you know, there, there are probably some physicians who, who come into the field recognizing that they do want to end up as perhaps a CEO of a hospital system at some point in the future. Um, and, and there are certainly physicians who get their MBA early in their career. Certainly the majority, however, uh, go into it for their clinical, you know, traditional clinical role, mm-hmm. and then they discover the importance of these administrative roles in delivering care. Um, and as you get more and more experience, certainly on the hospital side or in the large integrated uh, outpatient areas, you realize the importance of gaining additional expertise and so you see physicians going back and getting other degrees, like an MBA or a related uh, medical master's degree that allows them to have more flexibility uh, as, their, as their career progresses. Do you think that um, transitioning from a uh, practicing physician to uh, management administrator, CEO of a hospital, the result of that transition varies tremendously if that transition is the result of burnout or recognizing that, hey, there's something that I can contribute on the other side in addition to or rather than practicing? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. I hadn't thought about that, so I'm not sure I can give you a good answer. Uh, what I can tell you is that the, transi- tra- the transition takes place over, obviously, a, a fairly long period of time. Mm-hmm. You can't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'd like to be the CEO or, mm-hmm. hey, I'd like to be CMIO. Um, those roles come with training, often many years of volunteering uh, on different, you know, in different roles, on different committees, mm-hmm. really learning how systems work. Um, and, and as I moved in, you know, when I was first recruited out of our hospital system into an Intel Qualcomm startup, uh, and now 
uh, with Bocera Communications, another communication company. Uh, my value is my understanding of systems. When we hear about the anticipated shortage of healthcare professionals, the, um, doctors, nurses, with that looming over our heads, uh, this shortage of qualified uh, healthcare providers, physicians, do you see um, a problem down the road with many of our up and coming physicians wanting to branch out and learn systems and learn how to uh, better how to create better systems in healthcare rather than the hands on uh, physician activities? Yeah, the the number of available positions uh, in administration is so small compared with the number that provide primary care uh, direct care to to mm-hmm. patients. I think it's so small that that's not a real concern, but I will tell you that you do need clinicians in the role of helping to develop these improved workflows, these these systems, because the answer to improving burnout is not simply, you know, a change in the electronic health record. Mm -hmm. It really is a rethinking um, and a reprocessing of how we care for patients um, and try and remove some of those burdens off the shoulders of physicians. When I discovered what uh, what meaningful use meant as it relates, you know, to to the medical profession, um, I discovered that there was a lot of uh, uh, stress uh, around having to do things that normally were given to other people to do, you know, a lot of uh, uh, dictation and things of that nature, you know, the computer work, you know, you see your patient for seven minutes and then you spend 30 minutes at the computer because now you're not allowed to let someone else do that. What do you think some of the strategies might be down the road to alleviate or at least reduce greatly some of the stress on our physicians to maybe give them a chance to step back and take a look at what they're doing and um, maybe stay in the hands-on? Not necessarily that that's the best thing for that particular physician, but maybe a, a step back to take a considerable look. You know, there's, there's unintended consequences of virtually every technology you can think of. Mm-hmm. And um, if you think about the transition from the electronic health record, which is, I think, where your question is really addressing, um, you, took, you took a paper process that, yes, it evolved over time, but the evolution would take place slowly. Physicians could go years without a major change to the way they were documenting. One of the unintended consequences of having something digital is it's very easy to change. And, you know, it's often are adverse to technology, and I don't think that's true. I think, however, physicians are adverse to too much change. Mm-hmm. You learn and you expect to be able to do certain things in a certain way, and with digital, it's very easy to change things. And when you change things too rapidly, it can lead to chaos, and chaos leads to burnout. Chaos leads to error. Chaos leads to patient harm. So there's, there's a number of different ways to approach this. So first is making sure that as you develop tools for physicians and nurses to use, you use something akin to user-centered design, process where you involve the end user from the beginning of the process of design all the way to the end so that it's not, you know, the, the old... Uh, adage, you know, this was designed by engineers, and I really didn't know how physicians worked. So you involve the physicians and, and nurses early on. You know, that's incredibly important. Um, and the second thing is realizing that your staff absorbs so much change in a period of time. You have to let changes to your to your electronic health records settle in. Let people get used to a process before you continually make changes. Um, and then there are all sorts of new technologies coming down the pike to help in specific niche areas. I think voice a lot of the uh, voice technologies that we'll be seeing more and more of over the, um, are going to ease the way that physicians interact with the records. So there's, there's a lot of potential for improvement here. We'd like to get some more information online about uh, your organization and about this, um, this physician burnout as well. So from, from a, I think from a physician standpoint, uh, a couple things to point out. Uh, there are, there is, for example, uh, an international organization that represents uh, chief medical information officers, uh, and that's called AMDIS, A-M-D-I-S, so AMDIS.org. Uh, it is a good source for interacting with physicians that are in the chief medical information role or informatics role, uh, and uh, there's a lot of information that's shared. It's a, it's, it's a terrific organization from a physician-to-physician standpoint. Um, for the work that I'm currently doing in my organization, that's Bocera.com or Bocera Communications, 
uh, where we do communication, collaboration, and workflow. And we focus very much on the quadruple aim, and the last bit is really trying to improve the physician and patient experience. Um, it's interested in physician burnout, patient burnout. Um, they, can, they can see uh, blogs that have been written on our site by Bridget Duffy, chief medical officer, and she's one of the foremost authorities on caregiver burnout. Great, great. Benjamin, been a pleasure talking with you this evening. Terrific, Neil. I appreciate you having me. Thanks very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.